Hey everyone, Daryl Eastman here, product manager for GitLab Runner. I'm here with Pedro from Vieira, who, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, I can always do Pedro. Um, and we're here today to talk about a major change that's happening uh, in the GitLab Runner architecture. And specifically, we're working on replacing uh, the GitLab Runner registration token with what we have called, or what we are calling, the next GitLab Runner token architecture. Um, and I shouldn't say draft and style, but that's fine. Um, so what is the GitLab Runner registration token? Um, for a lot of you folks that, that have been using Runners for a while, you might be very familiar with this. For some folks that are new, um, this might be a little bit new terminology. So let's kind of quickly review what this is. So the Runner registration token is basically that string that allows you to register a new runner to GitLab. One of the flexibilities, one of the power, one of the capabilities that makes you know GitLab Runner uh, uh, in conjunction with GitLab CI. So great is that it's super easy if you need to, um, to manage your own runners. It's super easy for you to create a new runner on various environments, and then super easy to register that runner and, and, and register it to a GitLab instance. And the way the runner registration token works is, it's that it's unique and scoped to either the instance itself, a group or a project. So if you're running a self-managed instance of GitLab, you can register a runner at the instance level, and that's typically called a shared runner. Uh, if you are, say, on GitLab.com, right, and you're a group owner, you can register a runner that's scoped to your group. You're a project developer or, or maintainer of your project, you can register a runner at the project level. So that's where there's a lot of flexibility in terms of the runner. So the runner registration token is that thing that makes that connection between the runner application that you install on your local machine, on a virtual machine, or the Kubernetes cluster, makes that connection with that runner and your GitLab instance. So once you register a runner, it's able to accept and run GitLab CI jobs, right? And so that's what, again, makes GitLab and GitLab Runner so powerful. It's a very simple process. You install your runner, you register, and right away, it's able to accept and execute CI jobs. So that's where a runner registration token is. It's the thing that allows you to connect a runner to a GitLab instance and it's scoped at the instance, a group, or project. Hey, Pedro, did I miss anything? Did you call yeah, so one? basically the only thing, the only two pieces of information that you need to register is the URL and the token. So GitLab on its end will look up the token. Each project, each group, each instance has a, um, a registration token associated with it. So it will look it up and associate the or register the runner with the correct scope and return an authentication token back. Yeah, so with these two pieces of information, anyone can register a token, which is both a positive thing because it's very easy, but also can bring neg negatives as we will see later. Cool. Thanks, Pedro. All right. So what is changing? So basically what's changing is we are some of the steps for adding a runner in the future adding a new runner to GitLab is changing and it will no longer use the registration token method in other words you won't go to a, your GitLab instance and look at either the project level if you have access to the project level the group level or if you're an administrator of a self-managed instance of GitLab look at the instance level you won't be able to then grab a registration token string and use that registration token string to associate your runner to GitLab. That process step is changing. And so as Pedro was just mentioning, um, once we register a runner to GitLab today, you get what's called an authentication token. That's really the, the thing that allows GitLab to say, okay, this runner that's over here is in fact a valid entity, is in fact valid, and is able to execute and run a CI job. So what we're doing is we're moving, getting rid of registration token, and removing the authentication token creation method fully within the GitLab UI. All right, so I'll just kind of briefly walk through some of the steps. And then when I get to step four, I'll hand it over to Pedro so he can actually show you the execution of the command. So we imagine when we have this done, going forward as a user, the step one, you'll go to, to GitLab UI. Obviously, this will be scoped in terms of permission. So the admin level versus the group level versus the project level. So you navigate to the settings page for you know that scope, right? Um, for the and then in terms of you know I want to associate a runner either at my instance or group or project. You'll then fill in, fill in the details for the new runner. So something similar to what's described here in this mockup, you you know create a runner description, 
you add some tags, there'll be some additional configuration information you might want to add um, in this initial um, creation screen. Things like, hey, I want this to run to run on tag jobs. And we may also add some additional capabilities as well. So you will just basically fill this in and you hit create. Once you click that create button, what's actually happening here is that that's when you are now presented with the authentication token. So create, and at that time you'll be pre presented with not only the authentication token, but the configuration options that allows you to then install the runner onto the target environment, okay? So then you've got that, that script, you've got that sort of block of um, configuration information. Now you, you go over to where you are installing, you get that runner. And here's where I'm gonna hand over the page to show you an example of how that would look. So I'm gonna stop sharing and Paige, you wanna share your screen? Yep. Okay, so I have the command here already on the screen. So basically, Instead of uh, GitLab runner register, the main thing that changes is that we're now deploying the, the runner based on a runner token that was retrieved in that screen. And then you can pass uh, additional uh, command line options similar to the previous register command. Uh, so we can try that out now. Yeah, you can see now uh, it's tested against GitLab instance whether the, the runner is valid, and it created a unique system ID, which is this part. So previously, each runner had its own token, and um, like let's say in a Kubernetes uh, environment, this will, would be always a different value. With the new architecture, you will simply deploy one runner but it can be in different pods and each pod will get its own system ID. This is what will allow us the traceability of jobs in conjunction with the runner token or the runner, yeah, the runner token. Does that look good? Oh, that's there awesome. Is? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, so I mean, just keep your screen up for a second page or so. The, the, oh, oh, that's yeah. the, <laughs> the big difference is before you would, you would have gone to your GitLab instance, you'd have grabbed the registration token, this string that was, that was always visible, um, depending on if you had the, the permission set that was visible at the project group or instance level, you would grab a registration token string and you'd run the GitLab runner um, dash, you know, register command and you pass in and it would ask you as part of the registration command options to, to enter the registration token string. The difference is now you'll be doing GitLab runner deploy and you'll be passing in the authentication token that you were granted or that you were given once you created the runner initially. Um, so that's kind of the main big differences. Instead of a register command, you're going to a deploy command. And now you're probably asking us, well, okay, that's pretty interesting down in page or so why the change. So page, I'll start sharing my screen again and mm -hmm. we'll kind of cover that for the folks. Okay. So why are we doing this? Especially since, I mean, at, at first glance, it looks pretty you know, similar uh, to what's, what, what you're doing today. But one of the reasons we're doing this is because of security, right? So today, even though we have some mechanisms and, and via the, uh, a number of community contributions, we have some mechanisms today in GitLab to automatically rotate registration tokens. We do masking of the registration token string in the UI, things like that. Um, there is still a security risk involved with the current registration token method, right? Um, some you could theoretically, if you if you're not automatically rotating your registration tokens, for example, we've heard from some customers and, and that you know sometimes someone copies a valid registration token into or onto an insecure environment, and so once that token is stored in an insecure environment, it's very possible for someone to potentially use that valid registration token to then connect a runner to GitLab and we've called it a rogue runner, right? And then because of that, the registration token is today what we call, some folks have called it an Uber token, right? You now have this runner that's out there that is valid from a GitLab perspective because it was used, it was connected to GitLab with a valid registration token. So by going to this new method of an authentication token that's not A, not visible in the UI, that you can simply go to the UI, grab the string, copy to an insecure location, we have made, we're making A, the process more secure. 
In addition, and Pedro will give me a little bit more insights into the traceability aspect, because the registration token is no longer created by a user, right? Now we're using this authentication token method. Um, we'll be able to actually start tracing who in fact created a runner, which group or project or what scope the, you know, that runner is associated to much more sort of like seamlessly in, um, in the GitLab. Um, Pedro, anything else I should add about traceability that comes to mind? Yeah, the, the traceability aspects, we, we, some releases ago, we introduced the auditing of uh, runner registration. So you're able nowadays to tell any time that a runner is registered, but you don't have any context around that. You don't know who exactly did that. And with this change, since um, an authentication token was always created in the context of a user, you know where that runner was created. Um, so it becomes much easier to audit these things. Cool, very cool. Uh, and then finally, um, the third point is no historical record. So today, as Pedro was just, was just uh, discussing, with the current registration and token methodology, um, if you create, uh, I should say if you create, if you add a new runner to your GitLab instance today, there is no historical record in terms of when, there's no historical records in terms of like, when was this added, who added it? And um, we add, as Pedro mentioned, we have some functionality around that space, um, but the true traceability of everything related to that runner is currently not there in GitLab because of that sort of legacy registration token method. And things like um, even the rotation of the, of the tokens, if the registration token um, is automatically rotated or even manually, manually rotated, we don't have an auditing data that says, okay, the token was rotated two days ago. If there is an issue from security's perspective, I wanna look at runners that are three days old or five days old. So we have all of these challenges um, from a security and compliance perspective, a traceability perspective, ownership perspective, especially with large fleets of runners related to the current registration token method. And so the change will alleviate a lot of these concerns. We'll improve security, yeah. we'll improve traceability, and we'll have a whole bunch of capabilities around auditing. Uh, from his yeah, perspective. basically by removing the registration token, it becomes much simpler to audit because nowadays we would have to audit, you know, the creation of the registration token, the anytime that it's used, anytime that it's rotated. So all these concepts will go away by getting rid of the registration token and just keeping the authentication token it becomes easier to, to manage as well. Brilliant. Um, so when is this all changing in, in terms of like, what does the timeline look like? So here's our current plans. So in 15.6, and you'll see this is part of the 15.6 release post, we'll be announcing several deprecation notices, um, um, the actual registration token command in the runner, the API um, that actually in GitLab that is able that you're able to connect connect it to the to use the registration token method, registration token methods in our runner helm chart, as well as our GitLab runner operator. Those to those registration token parameters they're all going to be deprecated as a 15.6. Now deprecating the 15.6 does not mean it stops working. I want to just be 100% clear on that. We're simply notifying folks that our plan is to eventually remove that functionality. The registration, um, the current registration process will continue to function as it is today in 15.6. We're just officially giving notice that, look, this feature is deprecated. We are planning to eventually remove this feature. Uh, so that's 15.6, that's November 2022. That's the next release of GitLab is when you'll see the official deprecation notices. 15.8, January 23, is when we plan to release the new runner authentication token method. The actual UI that I, that I just showed you earlier will be, will be available in GitLab. The ability for the runner itself to use the deploy command and put in the configuration parameter with the authentication um, token method will also then be available in 15.8. And finally, this last nugget here, um, and Pedro Man, give me a little bit of help in kind of describing what this is, when we talk about this, but this whole idea that for self-managed GitLab uh, instances, we are gonna provide administrators the ability to opt in to disable the legacy method. Is that correct? Um, yeah, so 
basically if you're able to in your environment if you're able to get all in with the new methods and you don't see a reason to keep allowing the old registration methods to work then you can disable it you know at the group level or uh, what it's or at the instance level so yeah it gives uh, more security to to administrators to know that only the new method is available and that once it gets removed there will be no surprises brilliant and then finally if you know those that timeline holds and if as as we're making a, uh, making a call out here in the notation that um, and all feedback issues and, and, and feedback from customers that might come in. If there are no major objections, the plan then is by 60.0, the next major release of GitLab, which is scheduled for April of 2023, the plan is at that point to fully remove the permanent registration token method. It'll be, that means you'll no longer see the registration token in the GitLab UI and new versions of GitLab Runner will no longer have that GitLab Runner register option. So that's kind of that's our high level goal. Again, um, if we get feedback that makes us reconsider the removal timeline, we will certainly um, let everyone know that. But as of right now, we're, our goal is to try to remove the old registration token method by 16.0. We're very, very cognizant that there may be edge cases, pieces of automation along the way out there that we haven't considered. And so we want to give ourselves um, the opportunity to be flexible. Um, how am I this? change affect my organization. I kind of briefly touched on this, but we are aware of a number of different customers that have automation around the creation or setup, if you will, <laughs> or adding of new runners to the environment that relies on the current registration token method, right? We have an API that we talked about earlier, we're deprecating, where you, you, know, you can use a registration token method to add a runner. So if you have automation that uses the current registration token, uh, method, you know, obviously you'll be affected when the new authentication took the new authentication token methodology becomes the thing that we, we fully support. Uh, we would assume that you should definitely plan to communicate this change to any um, project maintainers, any group owners across the organization, because in some organizations, um, a, a lot of organizations actually, um, whether on GitLab SaaS or self-managed, project owners are allowed to add their own runners. Right, group owners are allowed to add their own runners. Those folks that have typically been used to adding runners, the registration token method, way, going into the UI, grabbing the reg token, right, entering it into whether it's you know GitLab and register command or entering it into the YAML file if they were installing it on Kubernetes via Helm. Those folks definitely want to give them a heads up that hey, GitLab is changing this methodology. In the old days, you would use registration token. You now have to get used to using this new authentication token, um, going to the screen, creating your, your, your runner and grabbing your authentication token and then installing your runner. Um, but um, that's, as of right now, some of the two big things we want to call out in terms of how this change might affect you, um, our customers and users. Pedro, did I miss anything on the slide? No, I think you're good. Okay, um, so we don't have a QA. and a There's one other thing I want to call out. I'm going to add to the, when we post this video um, on GitLab Unfiltered, we'll add a link in the video to a feedback issue. So we have a feedback issue to grab the feedback from users and customers um, around this change. Um, and we would really want folks to, if there are any questions, any concerns, things that we missed in terms of use cases, scenarios, you name it, please use that feedback issue um, as the mechanism to get in contact with us so let us know, hey, this is this might seriously affect me in some way, or you, you know, Darren and Paige, you haven't talked, you haven't thought about this particular use case or scenario. So that's it. That's our intro to the replacement of the GitLab runner registration token. Uh, internally at GitLab, we plan to do some additional ask me anything meetings um, along the subject as well. And so, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on the feedback issue. And of course, if you're at GitLab internally, feel free to ping us on Slack as well. Hey, Pedro, thanks a bunch. This was awesome. Any passing Thank comments you. Um, before we, we hang up? No, that's all. Thanks. All right, thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers.